Now more than ever, we are relying on social media to stay connected with the loved ones we are apart from, learn about the latest COVID-19 developments and share these with the community we care about. But with so much news on the crisis out there and being in a heightened state of paranoia, we might find ourselves unknowingly spreading inaccurate information. That's why we're being joined by a video call by South Africa's leading expert on social media law and founder and CEO of the digital law company, Emma Sadler, who will share more on how we can use social media more effectively and safely during the COVID-19 crisis. A very good morning to you, Emma. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. There's a huge focus on social media during this time, as this is how people are keeping connected and also with developments. How have you been keeping busy during lockdown or has the lockdown been keeping you busy? <laughs> Yeah, I think as much as social media has been allowing everybody to stay connected, it's mm. also given everybody another way to mess up because I have been busy. I spent the week before lockdown filming as many talks as I could, getting things online. I'm about to launch the Digital Law Academy. And then I've had a very fast lesson on how to give webinars. Now, Emma, I mean, you've touched on so many things, but one thing that you've also touched on is that people still do mess up on social media, especially because we're spending most of our time on the phone. But why is it harmful to spread fake news on social media, especially uh, during a pandemic like this one? In a pandemic, in a physical health pandemic, where we're spreading fake news, we can actually do very serious harm. Yes. Um, the types of fake news which really worry me, guys, is the fake news which either encourages complacency, mm. so basically the fake news that says only white people can get COVID-19, mm. or there's a vaccine which has been developed, so you don't need to worry about getting it. Um, the other type of fake news that I'm nervous of is scaremongering. Um, mm. We've seen government roll out, actually specifically, a criminal offense around fake news. But basically, what it says is that if you share fake news with the intention to deceive. It has to be either about the illness or about somebody's status or about government's actions to combat the illness. If you share it with the intention to deceive the person you're sending that content to, then you can be criminally charged. If you are just sharing everything you receive without interrogating that content and making sure that it's true, mm. then you too could be guilty of this criminal offense. Wow. I mean, on WhatsApp alone, there are so many chain messages um, of things regarding the pandemic that aren't true. And it's scary because some of our parents, they actually engage with such content, you know. So how can we determine on a very base level what we are seeing online is indeed true information? So I think that we've got to get to the point where we presume that every single thing we receive is fake. Mm. So I've got this campaign where I say fake news stops with me. Every single thing I receive, I presume it's rubbish until I can go and prove that it's true. Does it look true? Does mm. it have a credible source? Um, are the main news websites and news channels running the story? Mm. Um, you know, if it says this comes from John Hopkins University, then I'll go to the John Hopkins University Facebook page, see if they're, and usually the very first thing on those pages is we're aware of this voice note going around. Mm. It's got nothing to do with us. So make sure to reference a reputable publication before actually engaging with anything regarding to the pandemic. Now, any major world event is straight to create new phenomena on social media. What has there been an increase of during the, the time of COVID-19 crisis? You know, I think that there's been a few things I've seen really blow up. The mm. first is um, a crime that I call sextortion. It's just a made up word, but it's basically where you meet somebody online, usually on an online dating site, whether it's on Tinder or mm. Grindr, and you start a relationship with that person. Mm. And then they, you know, chat to you a lot. And you can't meet people face to face at the moment if you meet them online. You can't arrange to go and have a cup of coffee with them because we're all in lockdown, mm. right? And then they make you comfortable. They solicit naked pictures or compromising pictures out of you. Um, they pretend to be somebody that they're definitely not. Mm. And then as soon as they get these pictures, they turn around and say to you, unless you send me Bitcoin or 5,000 Rand to my e-wallet, I'm going to put this online. And people panic and they pay. So I think that, you know, if you have ever been the victim of sextortion, go to my website. It's called The Digital Law Company. And there's a blog there called The Sextortion Scam. Um, it's something that's been going on for a few years, but suddenly in the last couple of weeks, there's been a dramatic increase. I'm getting at least 30 inquiries a day from people who've been victims of this. And then I think whenever there are desperate times economically, 
and people are, are desperate at the moment, then we see an increase in online scams. So particularly phishing emails, mm. this email that says, um, we've got footage of you watching pornography and unless you pay us, we're going to release this footage. And for some reason, they have your, your password. I think we all need to take a moment to make sure that we're exercising good password management. Um, I also recommend everyone goes to a website called Have I Been Pawned? P-W-N-E-D. Mm. And it'll tell you if your email has ever been hacked. Um, and if your email has been hacked and you're using that same password anywhere else, then make sure that you've changed that password. We've also seen a huge increase in people naming and shaming lockdown offenders online. Mm. You know, I take a picture of my neighbor who's taking their dog for a walk which is not allowed uh, during lockdown. It's a criminal offense. Um, it's defamation, certainly. But in legal terms, I would say that it's defensible defamation mm. because what you're saying is true and for the benefit of the public because you're outing somebody who is doing something illegal. And from a from not so much a legal point of view, but from a, a psychological point of view, we're seeing a lot more addiction to mm. technology. So I think that we've all got to take a moment to realize that we are addicted. Mm. We're probably more addicted than ever during lockdown to our technology and we need to rage against it go for a digital detox and make sure that you're not spending too much time online because life is better <laughs> in the real world I agree with you on that one. And I know that social media does have its advantages and disadvantages, but it's up to us to be very cautious and aware of what we put out there, what we share, and how we engage with each other. Thank you so much, Emma, for talking to us this morning. I hope that you have a fantastic morning further. Thank you so much. All the best to you guys. Stay safe. Thank you so much. Now take heed to Emma's advice. There's already enough going on in the world without your social media being in an unsafe space. Make sure to use social media as a tool and not for harmful misinformation.